Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of the Sales Ops Demystified podcast. We are joined by Callie Berry of Remesh. Callie, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. And what I'm excited about here is Callie has, has a wealth of sales ops experience, but both at really big companies such as Thomson Reuters, but they're now at Remesh, who I believe has around 100 employees. Um, so, a less, yeah. Uh, yeah, so really big and also relatively small. So that's what I'm looking forward to discussing. So Callie, can you take us back to how you first got into sales operations? Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was a long time at, at Thomson Reuters. I was... Um, I was, <laughs> I don't know if it's typical. I feel like a lot of uh, sales apps come from either sales backgrounds or consulting backgrounds, maybe a little bit of finance. I, um, I was cold yeah. calling um, for about three weeks. Uh, I, I tried really hard <laughs> until my boss just after a few weeks was told me, uh, this is not for you. <laughs> oh, um, no. <laughs> exactly. Why was um, that? Because uh, he just heard oh, you on the I phone. Was, no, I was, ter- well, I was terrible at it, but every no, uh, I was, I hated hearing no, I, I couldn't handle the, the rejection. Yeah, um, straight so, in the heart. SD- yeah, it's straight to the heart. Yeah. I have a lot of, uh, sympathy for SDRs, uh, after, uh, my experience there. Um, but I was, you know, he was like, but you're smart and you were, you've been organized. And, uh, so we kind of started, um, filling in, in roles at this startup. Um, that, that needed to be filled in. And they were, they were kind of these ad hoc sales, admin sales, opsy type of roles without the, the, the actual function. Um, a lot of uh, RFPs and, and procurement process help. Um, and I, st- I worked there after college as well. And uh, uh, probably about eight months out into that, uh, we were acquired by Thomson Reuters. So we got kind of um, like sucked into the big machine of Thomson Reuters, uh, which uh, allowed for a lot of opportunity. We kind of really formalized the role. Uh, we ex- expanded from just this, the one business unit, um, 20 or so, 30 or so sales reps and CSMs uh, to over the, my course of my time there, uh, supporting an entire tax and technology business of hundreds of reps globally. Um, very, I, I would say it's not a traditional or what you think of sales ops is today. Um, every, things were very siloed. We had you know, parts of that function in finance, parts were in operations, um, but very heavily on sales enablement um, there at Thomson Reuters. So training, um, you know, general sales enablement resources, RFPs, and things like that. Um, but I wanted to be sales operations. That's where I learned the the uh, that term. <laughs> I was I knew I wanted to do more. So um, I, I made a switch. A couple switches, <laughs> and and throughout my time, that's where I I you know I learned Salesforce. I started doing uh, tool implementations at smaller companies. You know, when you move from a large company to a smaller company, you can get hands on. You can you can go from not being able to understand the engine to you know creating it and 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 getting behind the scenes. So that was that was really great over a course of a couple of roles. Um, yeah, now that I'm at Remesh running, I've, I've always kind of run the sales ops functions. And now that I'm at Remesh running sales ops, I've got a great team of um, a Salesforce admin and sales enablement, just uh, and about 20 sales reps. So, Got it. So right now at Remesh, it's 20 reps. And did you say there were three of you in the sales ops team? That's correct. Yeah. Got it. So there's yourself, a Salesforce admin, and what's the other person? Sales training and enablement. Yeah, so I'm taking on the role of, um, you know, high-level operations strategy and uh, business intelligence. Got it. And do you report to the COO or the head of sales? The head of sales, yeah. Got Um, it. Awesome. Interesting. So I collect ratios between reps and ops resources. It seems like you guys are one ops to seven, just below seven salespeople, which is slightly low on the ratio of in the average I found of like one to 15. Um, so it's nice to see that you guys are investing <laughs> in sales ops. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it was one of uh, the really amazing things about Remesh. It was that uh, really forward thinking uh, thought about sales ops and, and investing early on in sales operations. Um, I mean, I would say like sales ops report to the head of sales. So I talk about the sales team, but I, I consider myself, the owner of Salesforce. So I can, I, 
business operations really. Um, so there's there are CSM teams and you know project management teams that are all in there. We're all working together on clients. So um, the ratio is probably not as good as it as it seems, but yeah. <laughs> Got it. Um, and as well as Salesforce, what other sales tech are you using um, at the moment? Probably too many, but um, so we have, uh, we actually just launched Outreach a little over a week ago. Uh, great timing on that one. <laughs> um, we have Troops, uh, which is that Slack Salesforce integration. Uh, our marketing team is using HubSpot. Uh, we also have Insight Squared uh, for our business uh, analytics and uh, DocuSign. Awesome, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's not, not. Sometimes we have people on and they list about twenty tools. So that's yeah, reasonable. I, um, I guess I say that because I, if you're not using them fully, then it's too many. If you don't have time to make them hum, I guess you know. Exactly. I meant so. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. Now, looking at the the relationship between you and the twenty reps, um, do you maintain a one on one relationship with each rep? Like, or do you like, how do you interface with these sales reps? That's a good question. <laughs> um, I, Remesh is, uh, I think it has a unique culture. Everyone is, ha, takes ownership of their, of their accounts and their, and their teams. I would say for simplicity, we try to, you know, funnel things through management, but my team in some capacity has a one-on-one relationship with everyone. We've, um, we've done the, their onboarding through, um, either understanding our products or understanding our tech stack or, or doing, you know, general sales training. Um, and then throughout the, the, the life cycle, you know, as you, you're sell, we're sales up. So we see where mistakes are made. So then we sit down and we, you know, help correct and, and course correct there. So definitely want to. And can you share if possible a time where you guys, the sales off team have done something new with the reps that, that has made them more productive Oh, um, uh, if I wasn't doing that every day, then I, <laughs> I wouldn't be doing my job right, I hope. Um, uh, I mean, I think the switch to outreach that we just made is, is huge. Um, there were a lot of manual tasks that um, they, were, they were performing, whether it was, you know, you know, creating meetings in Salesforce for management reporting or things like that. Um, but honestly, like... Anything we do in Salesforce is we're thinking about um, how is it making a sales rep more productive. When I started um, at Remesh, there was there was not a Salesforce admin. I became the director of sales ops, de facto Salesforce admin, sales trainer, all in one day. And all I, what, the first thing I noticed was how much time was spent doing duplicate tasks, manual entry. And so I started just removing those, automating those things. And so it's only been about eight, eight or nine months, and I've. That's what I feel like I do every day. Like, how can I make this better? Because, um, you know, at the at, at the tail end of it, uh, leadership wants data, um, and you don't you don't get consistent data unless you do a little bit of automation, a little bit of uh, data cleanup along the way. Got it. So, should we say we've doubled their productivity in eight months? Do you think that would be fair? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and a, a point, so I assume more of the team are now working remotely. Um, yeah. Have you changed anything with the way the sales reps are working, used new tools, got rid of tools due to the increased amount of remote work? Yeah, we're doing, um, we, we made a big push to roll out DocuSign uh, very, very quickly. Um, uh, because of the remote work, we've, um, I made sure every, we did retraining on Zoom. Um, we, I made sure that they understood all of their settings and they had, you know, re, a resource center. We built out um, a, 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 like a data repository, like a resource center for everyone. Uh, so we're, all of the documents, all of their FAQs, all of the marketing collateral is all in one place, um, which seems like a no brainer, but, uh, you know, it's, it's harder than it, than it sounds to actually get all of that in one place. Um, and we're currently, um, you know, building flows into Salesforce to make it easier for them to get from lead to opportunity. Um, yeah. So a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it sounds like it would have been a stressful couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And we had timed uh, our um, launch of outreach right as the, uh, <laughs> the self quarantining happened. So it was, it was, this, it was a tough week, but I'm really glad that we got it out because uh, it's, it's definitely made a difference in their productivity. 
Yeah, I mean, so you, you have to do the whole rollout and training remotely. Yes, yes, all of our training. And we've had to onboard some sales reps remotely as well. And so the um, part of our onboarding strategy includes shadowing. And that's, that's a lot harder to do <laughs> remotely. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah we, we, we had to shift a lot there. Got it. Um, moving on to the sales forecasting process. Are you guys doing that within Salesforce and how what sales ops role in that process? That's a great question. I wish it was more. I wish I had more of a role in it. I think that there's a lot of value to doing um, forecasting in a system, but right now we're doing a, both a, a bottoms up and a top down. So, you know, reps uh, forecasting up to their, to management, management taking that haircut uh, and giving up to the VP. Um, and the VP, and then we're also looking at close rates by stage, by by type, and and doing like a top top down approach to it as well, trying to see how close those numbers are. Um, I think there could be a lot more value in doing it systematically, understanding, um, uh, you know, how accurate reps can be in in that. Yeah, there's a lot of room for improvement, but <laughs> got it. Okay, and so when the reps are doing their bottom up analysis. Are they submitting within Salesforce? You guys are taking it away and then presenting it to the VP. Yeah, it's actually run mostly by the sales directors at this time. And right. it's usually very, um, as sales directors typically are, it's, it's in uh, Excel. They're very much more comfortable in Excel uh, sometimes. <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't fault them for it. I understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we're going to have to submit a written request to bring that into the sales ops team and into Salesforce. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but I, I know, like, I even at Evster, I've sometimes working with the, lead, the leadership are great, of course, but sometimes they have their way of consuming and working with data, which may be the best for them, but may, may not be the most effective way for everyone to do it, right? But because right. that's how they want it, then. then that's how yeah. It yeah. Forecasting is definitely on my list of things to improve, bring into a system, but um, it's not broken. It's just it just could be better, and so as I've tackled uh, projects since I've started at Remash, I've I've been fixing the things that are broken. Got it. <laughs> so I think this is a really important skill actually for sales ops people because it might not be clear. You have this big list of things you can do. It might not be clear which ones which ones you should do first. So right. how do you do? You have a way that you prioritize that, or do you have a, a or do you just decide? <laughs> Um, you know, it's, it, I try to, to kind of gauge the impact and the time. Um, you know, we, there's, <laughs> there's not, I don't think that there's a perfect answer, uh, to that. Um, I, I do work with leadership to make sure that we are focusing on the right thing for what they need. Um, something that I think is a huge pain point. It's not getting me the data may not feel like a huge pain point to the reps or to the to the directors. So I like to get a lot of feedback, which we actually use Remesh for, um, to create that feedback loop. And um, I, I try to see like what's causing them the most pain. And, and that's how I try to do the, the prioritization. But sometimes um, the same, uh, five different pain points actually have a single solution. Um, you know, I had a lot of pain points around manual data entry and calendar syncing and uh, difficulty using uh, our old system uh, for cadences and things like that. And the solution was to switch to outreach. Um, it took a little bit more time, but it, um, it, it, was, it meant that we didn't have to piecemeal things in, into place. That, you know, I have a very creative Salesforce admin who, was, who could have fixed, you know, these tiny little pain points. But when you uh, accumulate them together, it actually makes it like a bigger issue sometimes. Yeah. Got it. Um, and now, if you could only measure one sales metric for the rest of your career, which, which would you choose? Oh, goodness. Um, I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. They all, they all lead into each other. Um, you know, you can't, I want to say how much is coming into the top of the funnel, but it could all be junk. You want to say close rate, but if you close one, you have a great close rate. <laughs> um, so I would say activity, um, uh, probably um, even more specifically phone activity. I found 
so much um, of of that really drives performance, especially on the SDR team. Um, they, we hate the phone. We think that everyone loves text messaging and emails. Um, no one ever answers, but the, the, the reps that are on the phone the most are actually the best performers. Interesting. <laughs> That's the first time we've had that metric. Really? Um, and yeah, it is. Well, we might have had activity before, but yeah. I don't think we've had phone activity specifically. And that's interesting. So do you, are you looking at every FDR's phone activity, like on a monthly basis? Yeah, yeah, we track it all um, into Salesforce. So we know how many emails are going out, how many emails are coming back, the reply rate, the, um, and then how many calls they're making. Got it. And then you have the, you share that with the FDR manager who will sit down and be like, look, we need to work on our phone activity. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really easy too. You just say, you just show a, how many calls someone's doing and their overall activity trends right next to how many uh, opportunities they're creating. And the ones that have the, you know, those hot big bars are the same on both charts. It's uh it's, you don't have to really explain it. <laughs> Got it. And then do you, like when you're working with an SDR like that, do you then sit down and show them how to do the calling? Because we know that from your days as a salesperson. <laughs> yeah. no, I am not the person. I, uh, I, I have worked with a lot of uh, cold call coaching in the past, um, like exec vision or you know, sales left has scale. Um, a lot of great people out there who are way better <laughs> than I am. Um, my my uh, my advice is just get on the phone. They're going to just say get no. On the phone. There we go. That's the quote. That's the quote yeah. for this episode. Cool. And then final question is: Who has influenced you the most, or inspired you the most in sales operations? Ah, uh, that's a great question. Um, I was listening to some of the other podcasts, and it it is it's hard because I think in a lot of sales operations, you you find. Uh, peers that teach you things. You find communities like Modern Sales Pros, but uh, if I had to pick one, um, I'd say uh, Sam Jacobs of Revenue Collective. Uh, I worked with him for about a year, and um, it was it was just uh, he taught me a lot along the way and brought in people to um, share best practices from uh, his network, which was really helpful and helped us uh, really drive um, our entire sales ops team forward uh, as well as the sales team. So. For sure. I actually am a member of the London chapter. And so I have to shout out to Tom Glayson, who's our, <laughs> who's our like lead as well, because otherwise yeah. he's going to get us there. Um, <laughs> awesome. Well, Callie, let me just pick out a couple of things that I particularly enjoyed. Um, okay. The first thing I think is like, we get quite complex activities and no, a complex metric, sorry. But then that one is a, like a very... It's a very telling leading metric, right? Just how much time have you spent on the phone? Now, let me quickly consult my notes. Um, and then your points about how sales operations, in sales operations, you can be doing loads of different things, but actually how do you leave something that isn't broken to focus on something else that can have a much bigger impact in the short term, um, and especially things that can fix multiple challenges such as your example with outreach um so with that we'll close and thank you so much for joining thank you i enjoyed it <laughs>